A lot is made of a patient's acid-base balance. Today we look at why we care if our patients, particularly our sick patients in ICU and anaesthetics, have a low pH or an acidosis. Just to remind you, the pH has the strictest range in the body. Between 7.35 and 7.45 is normal. Below 7.35 you have an acidosis or a low pH and above 7.45 you have an alkalosis. So acidosis is excessive blood acidity caused by an overabundance of acid in the blood or a loss of bicarbonate from the blood, which is a metabolic acidosis. It can also be called by a buildup of CO2 in the blood that results from poor lung function or slow breathing, and that's a respiratory acidosis. Carbonic anhydrase is the enzyme that converts CO2 in water to become H2CO3, which then becomes either hydrogen ions or bicarbons and vice versa. It is actually one of the fastest enzyme systems in the body. The whole system can become impaired if there are problems with the lungs and the nephrons in the kidney. So what does happen in the body when your pH is less than 7.35? We should look at this via a systems approach. If we look at the respiratory system, you'll see a hyperventilation or small respirations. This is because your lungs are trying to rid your body of acid by hyperventilating and breathing out more CO2. You'll also see a shift of the oxygen haemoglobin dissociation curve to the right. And as we know, this favours oxygen unloading in the body. You also see a decrease in 2,3 DPG levels, which are produced by red cells, and this is an attempt to oppose the right shift, which is imposed on the system by acidosis. The decrease in levels of 2,3 DPG, however, only really occur after about six hours of acidemia. Acidosis will cause depression of myocardial contractility, and this effect predominates at a pH less than 7.2. Sympathetic overactivity will cause a tachycardia, vasoconstriction, and a decreased arrhythmia threshold, you're much more likely to have arrhythmias with an acidosis. Resistance to the effects of catecholamines, like noradrenaline and adrenaline, occur when the acidemia is very severe. In terms of the veins and arteries, you'll see peripheral arteriolar vasodilation, venoconstriction of the peripheral veins, and vasoconstriction of the pulmonary arteries. Acidosis causes potassium to shift out of the cells, and you need to be really careful when considering potassium's effect on the heart, as it's profoundly arrhythmogenic in high levels. Within the central nervous system, acidosis causes cerebral vasodilation that leads to an increase in cerebral blood flow and therefore increased intracranial pressure. This occurs in acute respiratory acidosis. A very high PCO2 level in the blood will cause central depression and narcosis. So we've already mentioned some of the other things that occur with acidosis in the body, such as the shift of potassium out of cells that causes hyperkalemia, and you need to watch out for the heart when this happens. This is seen particularly in a metabolic acidosis, and only when caused by non-organic acids. You will also see things like an increase in extracellular phosphate, and an increased bone reabsorption rate in chronic metabolic acidotic states.